God is good. All the time. All the time. Even on bad days. Do you still believe? Can you witness? Yes. Can you tell me? Yes. Can you tell them? Yes. Can you show others? Yes. Okay. We'll find out. You know that church ain't meant for four walls, right? You know that church is meant to be lived and breathed out of doors, right? You know what we're preaching on tonight, today? The church is the place. Do you believe that? Yeah. See, I do. Because the church has not always been the place that I need. How about you? I don't imagine that I'm any different than any one of y'all. Though you may think I am, I'm not. I haven't always been a preacher. Right? I haven't always known the Lord. Now, I'm a preacher's kid. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. Maybe that's why I ain't right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, yeah, I've got it. I understand what Sunday is. I understand what Sunday is meant to be. But you know, that don't mean nothing no more, right? I know you may, you may not think it. But uh, I do know how to use the English language. Sometimes I just don't choose to, you know what I'm Is that okay? Yeah. Because, see, I believe that, that reality, for some of us, hurts, right? Did you come in here this morning broken? Come on now. You know nobody cares whether you did or not except him or not, right? Yeah. Are you wounded? Come on. Have you had a bad week? Come on. Have you got problems? Come on. Is everything okay with your soul? Yes. Come on, you can witness. You can tell me, you can tell God, you can tell others, you can tell yourself. It ain't always good, right? Sometimes we have bad days. And when we have bad days, our good days. I believe we need a good, I believe we need a place. A place like no other place. I want to share with you God's good news. It's in Acts chapter 4, 31 through 35. Let me set it up for you this morning. You can stand if you are able to and choose to. <laughs> Listen to the word of the Lord. <clears throat> After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spake the word of God boldly. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them, all that they, all that there were, all that there were no many persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put them at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made to everyone who had need. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Let me set it up for you. 1962, 1963, I'm probably five, six years old, maybe seven, six years old, and my dad had an annual vacation. Now y'all gonna have to know my dad, so let me share with you who he was. My daddy had an idea about vacation and that probably is not like any that you ever had. My daddy would tear a map out of National Geographic or out of some catalog. He would step down a hallway, open the door to the bathroom, and take it to the back of the door. He would back up 10 or 15 paces, take a dark he would throw. And wherever that dark landed, that's where we went on vacation. Thank the Lord that on this particular time, it landed in the hills outside of Cherokee, North Carolina. My daddy had a 1962 Ford Falcon. Can you feel it? He had a, a Coleman pull behind pop up camp. Can you feel it? So in that 1962 Ford Falcon pulling a Coleman pop-up camper, my brother Richard and me, my mom and dad took off from Cherokee, North Carolina. Oh my. My dad's idea was, as most of you, I'm sure, who are my age, maybe a little bit behind a little bit before me, is that daddy meant for a vacation to be fun. Daddy meant for it to be an adventure. And daddy had a quirk of his nature that you may or may not appreciate, but let me share with, with you another lesson. Daddy had this idea of road signs. Daddy loved road signs. And as he's driving, Daddy would be hunched over the wheel, but you'd see him look up, and when he saw a road sign that said,
say something this way or that way, you'd see a grin pop up on Dad's face, and he would crank that wheel one way or the other. The wheel would be chased, but God only knows where to find this point of interest that Daddy was intrigued by. Well, we're right outside of Cherokee, North Carolina, and we've been traveling most of the day, and Daddy looks up, and when Daddy looks up, you can see a grin come across his features. And as Dad sees this sign, he starts grinning, and my brother and I sit together. He's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. And he did. He cranked that thing to the left, and we skidded off the road of this big trail going out to the mountains. Only God knew where we were going. And when we got to the end of the road and the end of this big trail, we popped up on this old ramshackle set of buildings. Old, rusty, beaten down, weathered buildings set out in the midst of these pines up in the high the rocky and the smoky mountains. In front of it was a Coca-Cola freezer. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Those old Coca-Cola freezers where you pop the top and it's got ice cold Coca-Cola. Where well, it had ice cold Coca-Cola and a wooden engine. So my brother and I, we bailed out of that back and then we just had fun looking around. Daddy's doing his thing and I lost him for a minute. Then I, as I walk into the store, I see my dad. And my dad is looking at a and it's something hanging on the wall. So I, I kind of got up close to Dad, and I'm, I'm looking at what he's looking at. And on this wall in butcher paper, written in charcoal pencil, is a sign. And the sign says this. I was looking for a place like no other place when I mailed this place. This place is like no other place Therefore, this place must be the place I was looking for. Is that okay? I was looking for a place like no other place when I found this place. This place is like no other place. Therefore, this place must be the place I was looking for. Dad's intrigued. And so Dad runs down the owner, the proprietor of the store, old man in his 60s, and he said, can you help me? The guy said, yes, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll try it. He said, what is this and why is it there? What does it mean? The old man said, let me tell you, let, let me tell you my story. And here's his story. Now the guy from the 60s, he said, man, back in, in, around World War I, after the war, World War I, he said, I, I, I come from affluence in the north. My mom and my family owned lands and houses, and we were rich and, and powerful and, and, and all that kind of stuff, privilege and all that kind of stuff. But I was so screwed up and so dissatisfied and so disillusioned by the war and by everything and, and the culture and, and around us that I was so lost and so so just disillusioned, discouraged, and I took off walking. I mean, I left it behind. And he walked, he walked from the East Coast to the West Coast. It took him a long time and his journeys going and stopping. And as he got to the West Coast, he realized that it was the same out there. As he left, he turned around and he started heading back. As he's heading back, and this is some years later, so now it's probably in the midst of the Great Depression in the 30s. He said it was around September, going into the fall of the year. He says, I was traveling up through this area, and it got almost nighttime. And so I was, I was tired. So I laid down the next morning as dawn was breaking up over the ridges of the Smoky Mountain, and the mist was rising up from the, the valley, and the sun was burning it off, just at the break of day, he said, I walked out. And when I walked out and I saw this panoramic view before me, my heart swelled with joy. And in my heart and in my soul, I said, here it is. Here's what I've been looking for. So he said, I sat down and I took my carpenter's pencil, my charcoal pencil, and I took that butcher paper that I'd eaten my sandwich with, and I wrote down this that you see before you. I was looking for a place like no other place when I found this place. This place is like no other place, therefore this place must be the place I was looking for. And as I was looking at that sign, and as my father and he was talking to each other, he said, come on, let me show you. So we walked out behind the, the, this ranch, rambling set of buildings, 
up a little footpath. And as we did, we came on the ridge where he had walked some 30 something years before. And as we walked out there, I saw it. You can see the panoramic view, the, the mountains, the, the, the beauty of it all. And, and I can understand as I looked out there what it was that moved him, what it was that, that soothed his soul. And so can I share with you a truth? See, I believe that sign ought to be written in every church of God, don't you? Amen. I believe that sign ought to be written in homes and ought to be written in churches because I can't fathom that I'm any different than you are. I was looking for a place because I had no peace in my heart. I had no peace of mind, no peace in my soul. I was looking and looking for love in all the wrong places, looking and looking for soothing ointment to be placed in the hurt and the wound and the brokenness of my soul. And I couldn't find it no matter where I looked. I looked at education, couldn't find it. Looked at money, couldn't find it. Looked at all sorts of things. Looked at drugs and alcohol and couldn't find it. And it wasn't until I came to a place in Seminary, Mississippi, back in the late 70s, early 80s, when I walked into an old country church where a brother stood in the front of his people with an old, worn-out Bible and was preaching the love of God, there I found that place. Amen. It may be you're here this morning and you say, man, I'm looking. I'm looking for a place where I can find help and Holiness, where I can find peace in my soul and to my mind. I'm looking for a place where I can find love and acceptance. I'm looking for a place where I can find forgiveness. I'm looking for a place. Can I help? I believe this is that place. I hope it is that wherever you come from, maybe you belong to a church already. If you do, I'm not trying to take you away from that place. But I am saying this if you don't have a place, I offer to you this place. A place of joy, a place of service, a place of mission, a place of ministry, a place like no other place. See, that's that scripture. Let me, let me roll it out for just a minute as we go. In the infancy of the church, if we could take a time capsule and go back to those days some 2,000 years ago, because it's so far removed from our day to day, it's hard to wrap our minds around what they were going through. All their hopes and all their dreams and all their aspirations was hung on, hung on a man. And that man had been brutalized by human hands. That man had been decimated by the government and by religion and by everything around. He had been taken and beaten and crucified publicly, humiliated publicly, shamed publicly. And everybody that hoped, everybody that believed, everybody that followed, everybody that had placed everything on this man, he was dead, beaten, shamed, and humiliated. Oh, but. Oh, but. Glory be to God. God broke open that grave, not for him, but to us. Not to let him loose, but to let us in. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we saw an empty tomb. And he walked among us and he shared with us the greatest hope of eternity. Man, you put your faith in me, you put your trust in me, and I will never let you down. Amen? Amen. You follow me and I'll give you what you're looking for. You follow me and I'll let you have a peace that nothing else can give you. Amen? Amen. And so this small flock of disciples, the Bible names them about 120 by name in Acts chapter 1. And it says that, that they came out of the shadows somewhat like roaches and through the light of day. And fearful though they were, afraid, yes they were, because the government and religion had already told them, do it. Please, lift yourself up and get on my radar and we will kill every one of you. And they were doing it by the storm. And yet these faithful followers of Jesus Christ dared to believe, dared to believe, that in the midst of this chaos, in the midst of this brokenness, in the midst of this rage, this warfare erupting all around them, they believed that they could find a place like no other. Did they? Y'all help me. Did they? Yes, they did. These people found a place. Let me help you. They found something money can't buy. They found something that they couldn't build. They found something that they couldn't grow. They found something not of this world. They found something that only Jesus can offer. Amen? Amen. They found peace to 
their brokenness. They found peace to their woundedness. They found healing. They found wholeness. They found forgiveness. They found acceptance. They found affirmation. They found all the things that you and I are seeking for today. Amen? And so when they gathered together, it was an awesome sight. Y'all, can you imagine? Can you imagine? When they prayed, heaven and earth moved. Amen? That blows my mind. Would it blow your mind if we bowed today and we prayed and this place was like rocking and rolling? Would that mess you up? It would the brass I'm telling you, man. You know what I'm saying? I'd be like, y'all, yeah, I would not be the light. I'd be like, no, I don't, if you ain't faster than I am, I'm at the door. You know what I'm <laughs> but how cool would it be if you and I truly believe that we can pray and God will move heaven and hell? Amen. Can he? So let me offer to you this. What were they looking for? They were looking for a place. What was that place? That place was church. What is the church? Let me know. The church is a welcome station, isn't it? Now, back in my day, they didn't have any. They had stuckies. Y'all remember stuckies? Come on now with it. But today we got welcome stations. And so I'm old school. When my kids, when we go on a vacation, I tell my kids, y'all better go to the bathroom before we leave. I ain't stopping. You better drink all the water you want. You better eat all the food you can. And you better go to the bathroom because daddy ain't stopping. The trouble is, I'm married to a wife, a woman that happens to be my, my wife. And mama don't feel like daddy does about this traveling stuff. So she, after about every few miles or so, she would pull over, make me pull over at a welcome station so the kids can get out and do what kids do. And I realize something. You know, that's what church is, right? Are you and I pilgrims passing through a weary, desolate landscape? Are you and I weary pilgrims traveling this road called life? And has it been your experience? It has been mine. Because sometimes I get tired. I need to pull over. Sometimes I get thirsty and I need to pull in. Sometimes I get hungry. Can I offer you the bread of life? Can I offer you the living water of Jesus? Can I offer you respite? Can I offer you rest for your soul? Can I offer you that? This place can. This place should. This place ought to. Are you a pilgrim passing through a weary, broken, desolate land? Do you need respite? Do you need rest for your soul? Do you need strength for your body? Do you need somebody to just to tell you? May I remind you, those people that are there, they're there to serve you, right? When I walk into a welcome station, do you know what I get? I get a smile of thank you and can I help you? Amen? Is that not church? Is that not how it's supposed to be? Should we not understand that there's people that come that are broken and wounded? People that need something more than the attitude out there. They need something in here that they can't get out there. Something that can't be grown. Something that can't be built. And something that can't be bought. But something that comes from within, without. Something of God in us has to get out of us. And when it does, it makes the place that we're looking for the place where we are. Isn't that what church is supposed to be? A welcome station for weary pilgrims. How about a hospital? How about a hospital? Are you sick? You say, hey, you're sick. Well, are you perfect? If you're not perfect, you've got something wrong with you. None of us are perfect. All of us are doing the best we can, right? Aren't we? Are you sin sick? Are you soul sick? Do you need something? Do you? Of course you do. Have you been hurt by others? Have you hurt yourself? Are you living in a land that just, just messed up? Are we looking for something? Of course we are. Can I help you? People say this about the church. I don't go to church because I don't want to be around a bunch of hypocrites. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate that. Can I help you? Then don't go to the hospital. You know that hypocrites go to hospitals, don't you? When you go to a hospital, is everybody sick that goes to a hospital? Y'all help me. Is everybody sick that goes to a hospital? No. But those that are sick need a hospital. Don't they? And so if you don't want to be around hypocrites, don't go to the hospital. Have you ever gone to a restaurant? Hypocrites go to restaurants, don't they? What you can't cook? Can you cook? If you can cook, why are you going to a restaurant? 
If you can cook, you shouldn't be going to them places because you've got food in the pantry. You can get it, can't you? So if you go to a restaurant, why are you going? You go to a restaurant because you choose to, because you want to get something there you can't get at home. Sometimes you want to change your venue. Sometimes you want a little bit of something different to eat. That's church too, right? Didn't it? Can I help you? You're just talking. Have you ever eaten at a restaurant? <coughs> ever eaten at a restaurant? Ever eaten fast food? Can I help you? All right, let me help you. Did you grow the cow? Did you grow the fish? Did you grow any of the vegetables? You ate that stuff? Did you see the guy that cooked it? Did you go to school with a chef that made it? You ate that stuff? Do you know where it comes from? You don't know where it comes from. You don't know anything about the guy that cooked it. All you know is you wanted it. You sat down and you ate it, didn't you? you call, I call that faith. Amen? You ever ate frozen food? Faith. You ever ate candy? Buying a sausages, potted meat, down the bed. Faith, my brother, faith. Have you ever done it? Have you ever gone to the dentist? Have you ever gone to the doctor? Did you go to school with them? And you let them cut on you? You let them get blood in your mouth? That's faith, y'all. That's faith, isn't it? So the same kind of faith that takes you to go to the dentist, or takes you to go to the doctor, or takes you to go out and eat, or takes you to open up frozen food, or takes you to open up a, a can, the same faith that allows you to do that is the same kind of faith that Christ asks to give to heaven. Amen. Because you take it on somebody's word, you ain't going to die when you do it. Amen? Amen. That's a witness, y'all. That's a witness. And so somebody told me it's going to be good. So I tried to be a McDonald's hamburger. I'm not pretty good. You know? I tried to be Burger King and Wendy's and Whataburger and whatever else is out there. But somebody told me it was not going to kill me. I went to a dentist because they said the guy won't, 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 won't hurt you. I went to a doctor because they told me you'll be okay. And so I put my faith in the personal witness and testimony of others. I stepped out in faith and embraced that opportunity and I was made better. Or full or whatever. Isn't that true? In that church. That we feel just passing through, we need to pull in at a welcome station. We wounded and broken. We, we need somebody to help bind us up, somebody that can fix us. Is that not a great position, y'all? We need the bread of life. We need the water of life. We need something to fill our hungry souls. We need something to sustain us, something to something to help us. I was looking for a place like no other place when I found this place. This place is like no other place. Therefore, this place must be the place I was looking for. A place of peace. A place of rest. A place of power. A place of presence. A place of plenty. A place of provisions. A place of promise. A place of... Have you never known the power of God? Have you? Y'all witness. Has God ever touched you? Amen. Has God ever healed you? Has God ever answered prayer? Has, ever, has God ever done anything for you? Has God done that? Has God done that? Well, then these people needed to know the power of God. They needed something beyond themselves, something they couldn't manufacture, something they couldn't get up. And God did that. God moved in a way that only God could. Y'all remember the story, right? They saw it, y'all. They saw it. They saw Him raise the dead. Will that not blow your mind? They saw Him make water out of wine. Wine out of water, brother. They saw Him make the dead rise. They saw Him make leopards heal leopards. They saw Him make the deaf speak and the, the deaf hear and the mute speak and the dead rise and the dumb. They saw it. And we say, well, that was then. It can't be now. Can I help? Has God, did God not give you a cancer? Yeah, He did. God healed me with a stroke. Okay? So you tell me God can. I tell you God will. God can. Amen? Amen. I know that God cares. I know that God can. I know that God might. I hope that God will. Amen? So don't tell me that God, God is limited. God, God's not limited about anything other than our faith and our willingness to accept the opportunity for God to benefit. Manifest himself among us. Amen? 
And so they were looking for a place where God's power could be experienced. They were looking for a place where they could find peace. They were looking for a place of purpose. Do you believe that God has a plan for you? I do. I believe that God created every one of us with a plan and for a purpose. I believe that God can use any one of us to get the job done. Can God use you? Yes, He can. Will God use you? You tell Him. And so if you want to be wanted, we want you. If you need to be needed, we need you. I believe you're not here by accident. I believe you're here because God wanted you here. Okay? And I believe that God needs every one of us in a place where we can be used to our full potential. So this is a place of potential. This is a place of participation. God needs what you have to offer Him. What have you got to offer Him? Some say, Brother Lynn, I don't have nothing. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Can I help? Church service, the office place of being passed around, what kid's sitting there? He's not been in the Lord too long, and he's still trying to wrap his mind around what God wants. So he looks out there, and he sees people putting money in the plate. Well, the plate gets to him, the little guy takes the plate, steps out, puts the plate in the aisle, steps into it, says, I ain't, God, I ain't got nothing to me, but I'll give you what I got. Amen? Amen. Isn't that good? I mean, it, it, God, it's not that God doesn't need our vigilance. God can use our monies. But you know, God in His book says, if I get your heart, I get the rest of it. Amen? That's right. Then maybe what we need to do is realize that God needs us. Maybe it is that when the plate is passed again, maybe we need to step out and step into it and say, I ain't got nothing, Lord, except me, but I'll give you what i got. And I promise you, if you'll give Him what you've got, God will take it. Amen? Amen. And God will take your hands to help build His kingdom. God will take your feet so you can share the message of the gospel with those that need it. God will take your ears to hear the hurt. God will take your eyes to see the need. God will take your mouth to share the songs of praise and promise of God those times. Won't He? God will use every bit of you. God will use any of you and me and us if be willing to be used by Him. And so they were looking for a place like no other place, and they found that place where God could use them and they could accept the glory and the blessings of God. What are you looking for today? A place of prayer, a place of power, a place of promise, a place of potential, a place of participation. Can I have you as a close? The church was never meant to be a spectator sport. Can I help you? Here's what we do. I'm going to go to church. Okay? And do what? Well, I'm going to go to church. And do what? Brother Lynn, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. Yes, I do. I'm going to go to church. And do what? That's what Christ asked, isn't it? Amen. I'm going to go to church and do what? I'm going to go to church and pray. Who? Cool. All right, I'll take it. I'm going to go to church and I'm going to give. I'm going to go to church and I'm going to serve. I'm going to go to church and I'm going to worship. I'm going to go to church and I'm going to play. I'm going to praise. I'm going to worship. I'm going to serve in mission and in ministry. How about you? What can you give God this morning? Now help me. Can I, can I help you? If you can give to everybody else everything they ask, now, they got nothing to give you but a smile and hopefully a thank you. But that's all temporary. <laughs> what about you? God can give you eternal life. Can't he? God can heal your soul. God can help you. God can heal you. God can give you hope. God can give you blessings. God can do all kinds of good stuff. And all he wants and all he asks is not what you can't do, but what you can do if you're willing to, and that is to give him you. Because if you give him you, he'll take you and he'll put you where he wants you to help him build his kingdom for you, for us, and for others. Amen.